uh, Itamar Ben Gvir is actually. He's a very controversial figure. Yes. But his stances are anything but controversial. No. It's just that he's been framed as controversial mm. by people who don't want to see, as you said, strong Jews, a strong Israel. Uh, he's very clear. He thinks this is A, the Jewish land, and that we shouldn't let terrorism run amok. We are going to now be post-Holocaust. We're not going to allow that to happen We're again. We're not subject to that. Right. We're yeah. going to defend ourselves this time. Yeah. We're going to stop that kind of that kind of uh, terrorism from, from, from hurting us too much. Guys, I'm here with a really good friend, Yishai Fleischer. We've had the great honor of doing a lot of uh, great projects together. Uh, Yishai is the international spokesperson for Hebron, as well as the advisor. I say as well as the advisor to Ben Gavir. Maybe that should have been first. That's like the seemingly big job that you do. It's like uh, advisor to Ben Gavir is actually a pretty serious position. Uh, actually, my passion is Hebron. So actually, and, you yeah. say Hebron goes first. Yeah, Hebron's for sure. So that's <laughs> okay, my number one go. job, and, and I'm out there... Uh, trying to get people to come to Hebron, to keep it safer, to make it bigger. And it's, it's a Jewish community. And I, you know, I'm like you guys. I, I like to have boots on the ground, get real stuff done. And so that's my number one job. And uh, along with that, I also advise Minister Ben Gvir. But that's like secondary to my, you know, get, get it done and fix that biblical city up. What does international spokesperson for Hebron do? Like you described a little bit. What, what's more about that? What's going on? And then we'll talk about Ben Gvir. Well, first is that the, the Hebron is the seat of the tomb of the patriarchs, the matriarchs, the mamas and the papas. And there's a great building there that was constructed 2,000 years ago uh, by King Herod. And uh, it's been a, a pilgrimage site uh, for the last 4,000 years right. uh, since Abraham's burial. Uh, and uh, at the same time, it's so it's a very ancient city. It's a very Jewish city. We have the forefathers and mothers. We have Abraham and Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob and Leah. King David was king in Hebron. Caleb came to Heb Hebron. Right. So there's a lot of important stuff about it. It was really the first capital of Israel. Uh, but to keep it going is, is not so easy because it's surrounded today by a big Palestinian city, uh, which is in part, in large part, a Hamas city. Hamas. Hamas ha runs down there. That's right. It's, wow. a Hamas, it's a Hamas, ideologically Hamas-run town. Uh, and um, we have, we have this, this site and this small community. And to bring people down there, to connect them, uh, to find supporters, to teach the stories, and really to do the job that Caleb did, which is to come there and to tell the forefathers and mothers, we are coming back right. uh, to the good land. This is the time of the rebirth. And so that whole atmosphere of Jewish strength comes out of Hebron and that, 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 that ethos. How about a don't, don't worry about the giants? That's still a message. That's right. Don't worry about the giants. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, don't worry about the Seems giants. Like we'll overcome like, that's, them. That's Caleb's number one message, right? His number one message is it's a good land. It's a good land. That's it's right. a good land. Uh, and do not be afraid, uh, and do not be afraid, and that fear is a form of idolatry. Mm, that's right. right. Don't be afraid, God is with us. Mm -hmm. So when you are afraid, you don't believe that God is with you. You believe that there's other forces in this world. So it's seeing through, uh, it's seeing through, through fear. Uh, it's also seeing potential. Uh, Caleb had the vision to see a great land of Israel flourishing, and the other folks were afraid, the sin of the spies, they were afraid. So overcoming that sense is, is absolutely key to the Hebron ethos. Mm. There's a person on the world stage today that gets a lot of attention named Itamar ben Gavir, minister uh, Itamar ben Gavir. And uh, maybe actually just talking about Caleb, a lot of people view Itamar ben Gavir as like one of those forerunner guys that's going in and changing things and they see him for a really good Zionist people, people that really appreciate a strong Israel, appreciate uh, Jews strong in their homeland are actually real friends of Itamar ben Gavir. Uh, people that are on the sidelines of that, um, those that are a little bit like not so sure that they uh, want to see Jews in Judea and Samaria, not so sure they want to see Jews defending themselves, um, are a little bit uh, on the sidelines. Of, is Itamar ben Gavir, is he a little bit too radical? Is he being a little too Caleb-like? Uh, down, down in these regions, uh, maybe, maybe this is uh, you know bringing a, a biblical uh, character in, in for a uh, little more political modern times. But uh, being an advisor to Itamar Ben Gavir, describe your job there, and then we'll talk a little bit more in depth about some of the things uh, that we're seeing today. Well, first thing is is that the story of Caleb and the spies is a political story. Sure, it's a biblical story, but it's a biblical story about Jewish politics and yeah. and, and dealing with dissenters and, and fearful people and people yeah. that were against. Remember, Joshua and Caleb were seen as bad. 
by the other spies, and they were they were they were uh, they were besmirched along with the land of Israel, and they almost killed them. Wow! It says the the verse says that they that they prepared rocks to to they almost stone them to death. So so you know. Well, so you're saying there may be some more similarities, maybe more. the Bible's there to teach us about real things. Wow! And about real politics, it's certainly for us. Especially the book of uh, so-called Numbers. I don't like that name. We call it In the Desert. Right. The, the book of Numbers is a book of Jewish politics. It's a book of issues, yeah. political issues. Uh, Itamar Ben-Gvir is actually, he's a very controversial figure. Yes. But his stances are anything but controversial. No. It's just that he's been framed as controversial mm. by people who don't want to see, as you said, strong Jews, a strong Israel. Uh, he's very clear. He thinks this is A, the Jewish land and that we shouldn't let terrorism run amok. His main thing is personal security. Yeah. His main thing is that he's the law and order guy. His main thing is terrorists in jails should not be living in a Hilton, okay? They should, they should not be, and they certainly shouldn't be calling out for more terrorism. You murdered a Jew, you should not be like living the good life. Right. So that's one. Uh, the other thing is personal security. Israelis should be armed. If there's terrorism, terrorists who are armed, Israelis should be armed. Jews should be armed. So these are like very plain and simple things that he's asked for. And he actually uh, went out on a real political limb. And what he wanted to do was to be the Minister of National Security, which is really another name for Minister of Police. And that is one of the hardest, thought of as one of the worst ministries in the government. Because the police, as the police are in many countries around the world, it's, it's an it's a unruly lot. Uh, sometimes corrupt, sometimes problematic, and he wanted to get in there. He told the, the, his voters, I'm here yeah. to help you. I said to him, at the time where he was uh, negotiating for which ministry, I said to him, maybe take a smaller ministry, like a tourism ministry, and later on become th this ministry. He's like, no. We doing? He's like, I ran on this platform. My platform that I ran on is personal security. And we're not going to have... Now, now, now here, here I've got to take a parenthesis and help the audience that maybe doesn't know. Sure. About a year ago, we had these riots right. in mixed Jewish Israeli Arab cities like Lode, Lode was, yeah. right? Crazy like Akko. Right. And basically you had the revelation that your neighbors were actually jihadists. And we're not talking about Judea and Samaria here. We're talking no. about a city down the Israel city center just outside of Tel Aviv. Right. We're talking about regular Israel, main Israel, okay? yeah, right. mainland Israel, okay? Right. Uh, and, the, and what happened was is that you suddenly realized that the jihadist education has has yielded fruit, yeah. which is the next generation of, of jihadist thinking young people, Israeli Arabs who identify as Palestinians slash jihadis, who believe that the occupation began in 1948, i.e. with the birth of Israel, right. rebirth of Israel, uh, and basically are calling for the destruction of Israel and going to act upon it. And regular Israelis, not the folks living in Judea and Samaria like myself, so-called settlers, people who are out here fighting for the Jewish rights in the, in the ancestral homeland, in the biblical heartland, as it says here. Um, um, and people were shocked. And so Itamar ben Gvir kind of stepped into an open door, which is, he said, I'm going to help you defend yourself in these kind of places. I'm going to make sure. In the, in the five or six months that he's been in office, uh, he's allowed uh, licenses for 20,000 new uh, gun carriers. And before that, there was like none going in, right? Like it was a very, couple hundred amount. Yeah, yeah, very, very slow and and and, and uh, bureaucratic process. He streamlined it. He said, "Hey, Israelis got to have guns now around these regions, around these parts." We know, and actually in all of Israel, we know that who stops terrorists is armed citizens. Uh, and that's part of the. If you think about it, that's actually part of the Zionist ethos from the get-go, which is. We are going to now be post-Holocaust. We're not going to allow that to happen again. We're not subject to that. Right. We're yeah. going to defend ourselves this time. Yeah. We're going to stop that kind of that kind of uh, terrorism from 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 hurting us too much. So what I find really interesting is is that uh, I meant what, by too much yeah. is that if there's a terrorist attacker, okay, maybe he got a round off, but that's the end of that. And then and then if he got away, we're going to find him. Right. We're going to hunt we'll him, track down. him down. He's done. And they know that. I mean, just that, just that Israel can hunt down terrorists. Think about it. It's a tiny Jewish state. We have, we have 7 million Jews amongst a region of 400 million Arabs. And we are an armed ethnic minority. By the way, I just want to say that that phrase that I just said, yeah. an armed ethnic minority, that's a very important phrase that a lot of people just don't understand. Right. Israel is a nation state of the Jewish people who are an armed ethnic minority in the region. Say it that way, you'll understand what we're talking about here. Yeah. 
say it that we're Jewish and democratic and all these kind of things that confuses everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Just say the truth. We're an armed ethnic minority like the Kurds, mm -hmm. like the Kurds. We're out here defending ourselves from a majority, part of which is jihadist. Yeah. Okay, that's what it's about. Every child has a dream, a dream to become something extraordinary, to uncover their God-given talents and bless the world. But for Ukrainian orphans now living in the land of Israel, these dreams are in jeopardy. They need our help to build a brighter future. Imagine a child without parents, without the love, care, and support they deserve. It's our duty as believers to heed the Bible's call to care for the orphaned, mentioned more than 20 times in scripture, and to shun neglect and oppression. Today, you have the power to make their future brighter. By adopting Ukrainian orphans, you provide them with the essentials they desperately need, food, clothing, shelter, and most importantly, love. Your support will guarantee their transformation. But this isn't just about fulfilling a moral obligation. It's about fulfilling God's commands. By caring for these orphans, you are obeying His call to care for the orphaned, refugees, and the poor. It's an act of righteousness that carries immense blessing. And there's more, the prophetic significance of your help. By assisting these orphans and settling in the land of Israel, you contribute to the fulfillment of biblical prophecies, the ingathering of the exiles. It's a remarkable opportunity to be part of God's divine plan. By adopting an orphan, you will provide them with the physical and emotional stability they need to build healthy lives here in the land of Israel. You will honor God's commands and fulfill the prophecies of bringing the exile back to their homeland. It's a chance to make an eternal impact. Click the link down in the description below to donate now and become a beacon of hope for these vulnerable orphans. Thank you so much for your support. So everything you talked about so far, I'm pretty sure most people in the uh, anti Ben Gavir camp would agree with. That's right, right? Uh, most people are for approach. They're not going to say they're, they're for weakening Israel. They're not for weak Israel. They would agree on most of these main topics, but I think uh, they've demonized Ben Gavir on issues that Ben Gavir is not really about. Is that correct? They've taken subjects that Ben Gavir is not actually his main line. Uh, for, say, many people think that Ben Gavir hates Christians uh, and, like, but Ben Gavir doesn't do a lot with Christians. That's not his main, uh, his main thing is the things that you outlined. So his main objective is not uh, to, uh, he doesn't talk about Christians. He doesn't know a lot about this, this uh, you know, Christian Zionism, these kind of things. So uh, I think there's been a few things that have happened along the way that uh, news outlets took a big jump on uh, Ben Gavir uh, for maybe a, a few specific stories uh, where Ben Gavir uh, worked on a case uh, for some people, but that's what lawyers do. Lawyers represent whoever pays them. That's what law firms do, and they have to represent these people. So would you say anything to just that? I want to clear that up with the channel. We have a lot of Christian listeners. Most of them think that it, it, Itamar ben Gavir, it really hates them. Do um, uh, you have any words to say about that? Just to clarify that point. As an advisor to Itamar ben Gavir, you know him well. You know his policies. You know what he's about. Uh, maybe just a cl uh, clarification on some of those uh, things for our Christian folks. These are important questions. Uh, Israel, as I said before, is a minority, an ethnic minority in this region. Within that ethnic minority are other minorities. Yeah. Okay, Christian Arabs, uh, Druze, yeah. Cherkessi, all kinds of minorities uh, that, that are out here. Itamar ben -Gvir is not concerned so much with religious questions. Right. He's concerned with law and order, right. law and order. And he is not interested in seeing anybody out of line or anybody striking at uh, 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 residents, citizens, visitors. Yeah. He wants to see law and order. He wants to see the end of a uh, kind of um, you know wild west mentality where 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 jihadists are 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 gathering weapons. There's about four hundred thousand. Our police estimates about four hundred thousand weapons, illegal weapons, in the hands of Israeli Arabs. Uh, Israeli Arabs. Israeli Arabs. <laughs> Israeli Arabs. Wow. Uh, not to mention Judean Samaria. Now, with regard, but, but I want to, I want to, I want to touch your question. Nobody here wants to see any violence against Christians, against any minorities that come here. That is, that is simply, it's against the law, it's against the Jewish law, uh, and it's against the interests because we are not interested in destabilization. Right. You're right that he's not the champion of uh, Christian Zionism, or or any, that's not him at all. You're right. He is here to help the average Israeli Jewish citizen feel uh, uh, feel safe and 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 have their, their their safety back. Oh, and there's another big issue, which is protection rackets. Protection rackets. Arabs and Bedouins run these mafia-style protection rackets throughout the south uh, and the north. And so and so 
making laws that make protection rackets more illegal, more, more, more criminalized, uh, and making sure that, the, that there's going to be prosecution of these kind of people. That's what he's about. That's what he promised his voters. Yeah. Okay? Uh, but at the same time, I want to tell you, it's not in his heart so much to, to think about the, the life of pro-Israel Arabs or pro-Israel Christians. That's not what he's about, and that's not whose voter base is. Yeah. But when a Bedouin soldier uh, was killed in a terrorist attack, he came to that yeah. family, yeah. and he made sure to give them respect and honor, and there's a great video of him talking. And the same thing with, with Christian folks. He has made it clear. He is here to protect the people. He, by the way, said that he's here to protect even Muslim prayer on the Temple Mount during the Ramadan. This year, here's, here's, here's a fact. This year was the quietest, least problematic year of Ramadan prayers on the Temple Mount. Now, we can discuss whether, you know, we want to see, you know, Ramadan and, and, and Judaism's holiest spot. We can discuss that. Okay? The fact is, the policies yeah. speak for themselves. The policies were to allow uh, 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 freedom of movement, freedom of access, freedom of prayer, and the same thing for, for Christian folks. This is a country of law and order, and that's what Ben Gvir came to do. So I've got to tell you, as a Christian uh, and one of those Zionist, extreme Zionist, uh, and encouraging Zionists around the world, that uh, actually Ben Gvir is one of my favorite politicians, uh, and the fact that he believes in a strong Israel. The fact is, is that uh, I don't understand Christians that come and think that they need to take, that Israel needs to be some sort of run like they think it. No, Israel needs to be run like a good, strong Jewish person thinks it needs to be run. And then the Christians around the world should be applauding when people like Ben Gavir, a Caleb of our generation, says, we're going to be strong in the face of giants, and we're not going to care about those giants. We're going to stand really firm with them. Uh, so that's what I, I would encourage all of our viewers uh, to take a little deeper look. Let me also don't look, buy right. those those taglines right. on the mainstream line that Extremist. are meant, they're meant to demonize. Right. So it's, it's, it's propaganda against one of Israel's best politicians, right. Bible-based. What, everybody that's listening is like, wait, Ben Gavir's Bible-based? He's the most Bible-based politician in the whole crew. One of the 100%. most, right? 100%. Hardcore Bible-based. So we need more Bible-based politicians and Ben Gavir's a great one. A few things about what you're saying. Uh, first thing is that you use the word extreme and hardcore in a positive sense. <laughs> right. <laughs> and a lot of people today yeah. have been used to this, this idea that these are bad words. <laughs> right, hardcore is like, like, yeah. like hard oh, line. Right. That's actually a good thing. <laughs> like, like, like I hardcore love my country. I hardcore <laughs> want to protect this land. I hardcore don't want to see people be hurt anymore and, and be terrorized. So just that language itself, that is very healthy to be like, no, actually we, we are passionate about these things. Okay? Right, passionate about protecting Israel. Passionate Israel about strong. protecting Israel. And, and, I, and here, here I want to make a very important point. This is such a important And we'll wrap up point. at this point. Okay. When you talk about Ben Gvir, people say like, oh my God, there's like this, uh, you know, uh, extreme minister in Netanyahu's government. Yeah. That ex so-called extreme minister was elected by the people. <laughs> That's true. It's not that there's a guy and he showed up and here I am. It's what the people want. Yeah. The people want protection. Yeah. Regular people elected him. Right. Okay? In the, and not, by the way, just in Judea and Samaria, not just uh, very observant religious folks. Actually, people on the periphery, in the Beersheba area, in the south and the north, where they feel the brunt of the attacks on them. Yeah. And so, so it's, he's a representative yeah. of, of a people's will to live in safety. Right. So don't, don't, be, don't be demonizing him. If you're going to be demonizing him, tell the truth. You're demonizing Jews that want a strong Israel. Yeah. Okay? Let's call, let's call him for what it is. And a majority in an elected process that yeah, elected sir. him. Absolutely. It's a great point. Absolutely. Uh, we've got a lot of, uh, you know, here's the good news. Ben Gavir is just the beginning because the people of Israel the demographic is changing, right. and that therefore the uh, pol politics are changing. We're electing people that are more Bible-based. We're electing people more connected to Zionism and seeing the people settle even in Judea and Samaria and being strong and all of these things of which Christians should be loving and accept uh, accepting uh, that this is this is fantastic. So this is only going to continue more and more in Israel, and the world better just get used to it because politicians. This is this is a will of the people, and uh, we would like for Israel to continue to be a great democracy. Uh, and being, uh, and eventually even more than that. Uh, but right now, it's great. We have a great political system here that is, uh, it's, we, we got reforms going on. We got a lot of things going on. That's another show, uh, another time. Uh, but thank you, Yishai, for jumping on here, hitting some of the hardcore issues. And hopefully all of our listeners are thinking just a little bit. If I can make you think, I'm gonna go check out about Ben Gavir. I'm gonna go check out, because I think everything I'm hearing on the news is not quite right. That's, right. That's what the Israel Guys is all about here, is to make you think, wait, I've been buying propaganda all this time. 
well, we're here to set the record straight. Ben Gavir is a great politician and doing great things. Thanks, you, Shai, for Amen. being an advisor. God bless you. Bless you, brother. <laughs>